Hello, dear friend. So I got a um, couple of questions back at home, but I left them all. Yeah. Because I had to bring my children too. So we're also a group of eight. <laughs> and um, I'm also coming here with my wife, but I wanted to ask that I've been so lucky to be with her. And I'm so in love with her. But I don't want to make her a big condition for me. Well, don't make her a condition. Let her be the manifestation of your desire. Let her be the real life version of your vortex. Let her be the manifestation of the thoughts that have turned to things. Let her be the things that the thoughts have turned to. Let her be the subject of your powerful, deliberate creation. You see, what happens is, since you're here in these physical bodies and you're thinking these thoughts and sources helping you and you're out here on the leading edge, your thoughts are going to turn to things and things are sort of conditions. Things that you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch. But the key is the emotional response to them. What you want to accomplish, and you are mostly, is you want to feel good anyway rather than need something to be a certain way in order to feel good. Are you telling us that she's so wonderful that all you have to do is look at her and you feel good and that worries you? Well, <laughs> no, it's just that I enjoy her so much. Well, and the time we've been together, everything, I just love her so much. And but when if and we so what's worrying you about that <laughs> because we get your concern we're saying don't be conditional in your love and you're saying I can't separate my love from the condition of the magnificence of that which is her I'm responding to the condition of her and that's why I feel love no, is that what you're worried about no I'm worried that if for example if we get into a disagreement then it feels too big to, for me because I feel the absence of Oh, we have to tell before. you we're so happy that you have some of that <laughs> because in that case now you've got something that you can accomplish here in other words so what you're really saying is I want to have a step five relationship with my that's wife. exactly that's exactly what I want yes and so far you can't do that she's got to be good before you feel good she's got to be just right before you feel good she's got to agree with you before you feel good? Well, there are some subjects maybe that takes me off the vortex with her, maybe. We were going to say something sort of snarky to you. What's that got to do with her? <laughs> I know, I know. I, I want to have that, I don't know, control or resilience. Well, she is a wonderful, wonderful partner if she does not stand on her head to make you happy because that happiness is an inside job and if she were someone who stood on her head in enough different ways to make herself the way you want then you would be ill prepared for the rest of the world because the rest of the world isn't going to do that for you and so you're going to be running around mostly unhappy she's just the tip of the iceberg is she just the tip of the iceberg aren't there a whole lot of other things and experiences that are displeasing you too yes should make your wife feel a lot better <laughs> so now what are you saying to us are you saying you don't want to live conditionally at all you want to find connection regardless of what's going on well that's what true alignment is that's what focus is but you got to warm up to it in other words you can't have practiced thoughts of discontent for a while on a number of different subjects and all of a sudden feel satisfied but you can Find something that's easy to feel satisfied about and isolate for yourself the feeling of it. What most people are looking for are those who are easy to love, those who are easy to be around, those who are easy to feel good around. But really, they don't help you because they give you a flawed premise of the way life really works. They teach you to depend upon them and their behavior for your feeling rather than your focus and your alignment with your inner being and these people no matter how stable they feel in your life 
they don't hold that stability and they even come and go where your inner being will always be there and so what you just are saying to us is I want to awaken within myself my awareness of my inner being I want to awaken within myself the reality of my vortex I want to focus with such deliberate intent by paying attention to my own guidance system that I show myself when I'm satisfied and when I'm not and most of all what we hear you saying or at least it's what we want you to say because we have a really good answer for it <laughs> we want you to care about satisfaction because you have so much control at that part of the emotional scale if you're in anger or disappointment you don't have any control you're just gonna have to wait for it to blow over and maybe in a day or two you'll wake up and you'll feel better but if you are just a little dissatisfied you've got some control it's like your car at the top of the hill you can stop it when the momentum is slight so that's what you want to do you want to start looking for those opportunities when you're just mildly dissatisfied to find satisfaction you just want to show yourself that you have that ability and here's the big piece for you for everyone we've written so many processes and taught it over so much time about how to move up the emotional scale how revenge feels so much better than despair because there's some control in it but any of those negative emotions still as you move up the emotional scale the predominant feeling that you have as you leave off resistance is relief relief is the emotion that you feel when you've just let go of a little more resistance well once you relieve resistance and relieve resistance and release it and release it and feel relief and release it you get to this place where you're barely dissatisfied and the release of resistance between dissatisfied and satisfied is so slight it's almost not noticeable there's so much control in that and when you move into satisfaction you're free of all resistance and when you are free of resistance in this universe that's all about energy moving and law of attraction when you are free not on every subject and not forevermore just free in this moment of resistance because you practiced yourself there and you've got it nailed for now for this moment when you're free of resistance now the momentum of your vibration moves so fast that it's easy to get tuned in with your inner being and that's where your true empowerment and clarity that's where who you really are comes into play and that's when you really get to know who you are that's when you become your own best friend and that's when you are nicer for everyone else to be around too but you don't do it to be nicer to them because being nicer to them is the thing we're trying to talk you out of we're trying to talk you out of finding mutuality with each other we're trying to talk you out of the conditional love that so many of you are living we appreciate your positioning of this question in this way what we anticipate with such delight is people around you misbehaving in all manner of ways <laughs> and you seeing it like your inner being does that they're having a step one moment and that they are having an expansive moment and that they are contributing to their own vortex and to the vortices of the world and meanwhile you're steady anyway that's what you want you want to be steady anyway because conditional love sucks because as soon as you get one to behave then there's always another one who misbehaves and then another one and then another one and then another one and then you're in the smoking section <laughs> and then it feels like the whole world is against you it feels like there's nothing you can do you feel disadvantaged and taken advantage of and none of that is true helpful a lot a lot enough just one quick thing what does intelligence has to do with all of this I, I've been wondering about the role of intelligence in the decisions that we make because I get it that alignment trumps everything so alignment alignment would me would seem to me like much more important than anything else we want to define intelligence intelligence is just thoughts and what humans want to call being really intelligent what they really mean is having thoughts that they're not contradicting so much so they don't feel so much confusion around it intelligence 
from our definition is thought that has so little resistance that the momentum of it is really increasing and there's so much power in it humans mean lots of things by it humans are usually just wanting to compare themselves to each other and usually in the comparison they lose their connection and they're not that intelligent <laughs> yeah, and, and how do you stop how do you stop from comparing yourself to others well Comparison, we're not wanting you to get rid of comparison because in sifting and sorting in order to know what you don't want and know what you do want, there has to be some comparison. There have to be choices. We want the choice to be dissatisfied, satisfied. We want that to be your dominant choice. But there's so much to choose from. We just want you to choose what you do want rather than putting the emphasis on the choices that you don't make. It's like going to a buffet. If you go to a buffet, there's one on this ship, go to it. And there's all this to choose from. You wouldn't say, Ooh, I don't like that. And I don't like that. And then try to get with others to get a petition together to have that removed. <laughs> I don't like it. Well, don't put it on your plate, but it might get on my plate. Someone might accidentally get some of it on my plate. It won't get on your plate if you don't put it on your plate, but it's so near. I don't even want to look at it then don't look at it I can't help but look at it well stop it <laughs> choose what you want and put what you want on your plate choices are really really wonderful but so many people don't understand their own empowerment and they believe that there are things out to get them like smoke there are things that are out to get them and that other things are intruding into their experience which is never ever true there is only the law of personal inclusion so when you try to exclude something that you don't want you're not excluding it you're including it and that's what makes you misunderstand that's what makes you think that things can get into your experience because things keep getting into your experience that you do not want so you assume there must be some assertion and somebody else must be asserting things into your experience because I wouldn't have chosen what I didn't want but I've sure got what I didn't want well isn't it helpful to know that the only reason you've got anything that you don't want is because you focused upon it and therefore invited it in we want you to make choices more choices in every day the better just do it with an eye to satisfaction that's the piece that you're looking for don't try to push anything away it won't go away nothing ever goes away that you try to push away it just stands stronger and gives you more reason to push against it which you do and the more you push against it the more pervasive it is there's a war against drugs and a war against cancer and a war against crime and a war against teenage pregnancy and a war against Ah, war against and a war against and every one of those things that you're pushing against individually or as a society is getting bigger it's how it works you see so when you finally get how it works and then you use your awareness of how it works effectively by utilizing your own guidance system oh then you move around with such a feeling of empowerment and you catch yourself in the early stages when you start to go down some road that you don't mean to go down good yes thank you very much yeah yeah, yeah.